So what is the function of substation? Number one, it is used for the protection of the transmission system because the substation includes protective devices as circuit breakers and relays. It contains current transformers and voltage transformers which you are going to discuss in this course. It is used to control the exchange of energy because the substations is between the generation and the transmission and between the transmission and the, the distribution. Therefore, it controls the flow of the power or the exchange of the energy between each of these different systems. It ensures steady state and transient stability. The steady state and transient stability fields are a very large and important fields. You will find that the steady state represents the stability of the power system. The power system when it supplies a constant amount of power. The transient stability represents the, the behavior of the system when disturbance happen. If our system can sustain these disturbances or not. The load shedding and the prevention of loss of synchronism. So the substation controls the flow of and exchange of energy. Therefore, we can disconnect some loads which is called the load shedding in case of overloading to protect our generating power plants and prevent them from losing synchronism. We can maintain the system frequency within targeted limits. What I mean by this, if we have for example frequency system frequency in Egypt, it is 50 Hz. So we can control our frequency between 50 to 50.5 as a maximum or 50 to 49.5 and this is our limits. If the frequency exceeds this value or decrease below than 49.5 then our substation contain devices which start working in order to maintain our frequency inside the targeted limits. Voltage control. Our substation contains devices which controls our voltage. We can reduce the reactive power flow by compensation of reactive power tab changing of their transformers. So in order to control the voltage, you know that our generators generate B and Q, active power and reactive power. So when the demand for the active power increase, the Q increases, our voltage starts to decrease. So we start to compensate this reactive power by using capacitor packs which support or supply Q or reactive power. So our voltage will start to increase again. In the transformer we have tab changers. The tab changer starts to change the number of turns of the transformer. Changing the number of turns will cause a change inside the voltage. When we discuss the transformer you will understand how tab changing can change our voltage. The data transmission via power line carrier for the purpose of network monitoring, control and protection. So our substation also can be used for data transmission. It can be used to help in fault analysis and improvement in that area of field. Since our substation contains protection devices as relays, circuit breakers, CTs and voltage transformer. So they can help in analysis of fault occurrence and we can improve our protection and our reliability. So those are the function of the substations. Now let's discuss the classifications of the substations. Number one, the classification based on the voltage levels. We have a different substations, AC substations or alternating current substations. We have a different types according to the voltage. There is extra high voltage substation extra high voltage substation, high voltage substation, medium voltage substation, low voltage substation, and high voltage DC substations. 
so according to the voltage level extra high voltage means voltage greater than 220 kilovolt 500 kilovolt for example 500 kilovolt 750 kilovolt 1200 kilovolt and so on high voltage means any voltage greater than 66 kilovolt medium voltage any voltage greater than 11 kilovolt low voltage any voltage lower than 11 kilovolt and of course our direct current or dc substations so that is the first classification the second classification based on the outdoor or indoor our substation can be outdoor under the open sky it can be in a large area in a large open area or it can be indoor substation inside a building so that's the difference between the outdoor and indoor substation we can classify our substation according to their configuration we have an air insulated outdoor substation or sf6 gas insulated substation gis or composite substations having the combination of the above two so simply the sf6 can be used in small areas it can be most likely used inside the indoor substation it uses the sf6 gas but the substation or outdoor substations use air gas insulated and here we have also a composite which is a mixture between both of them it contains a combination of them we have another classification based on the application we have a step up substation which is used with the generating substation or generating power plants as the generating voltage is low for example 3.3 kilovolt or 11 kilovolt and so on so we have a low generating voltage so we use the substation or the step up substation to step up the voltage we have also the primary grid substation it is created at a suitable load center along the primary transmission lines so the primary grid substation it is along the primary transmission lines we have a secondary substation it is used according to or along the secondary transmission lines we have also the distribution substation it is created where the transmission line voltage is stepped down to supply voltage so the step up substation it is used to step up the voltage the primary and secondary grid substations is, is used at the primary transmission line and the secondary transmission line the distribution substation which is used to distribute the power therefore we it is used to step down the voltage so as the consumers they can or the customers they can use the power we have also the bulk supply and industrial substations which is similar to the distribution substation but it is used or created separately for each consumer the bulk supply and industrial substations are different from distribution the distribution step down the voltage to the supply voltage 380 volt for example but our bulk and supply and industrial substations take at a higher voltage we have also the mining substation it needs a special design consideration because for the extra precaution for safety needed in the operation of electric supply so the mining the substation which is used in mining therefore our mining requires electricity therefore we will need a special substation for mining because it needs extra precautions for the safety so those are the four classifications of the substations